he's putting Spanish chorizo in the paella. Chorizo is not the same. Today, guys, we're going to be reviewing Joshua Wiseman making a paella. Now, Joshua doesn't do much Spanish food, if anything at all, on his channel. So, let's see how he does. If you are new, welcome to the channel. My name is James Makinson. I've been cooking for the past 14 plus years, with a majority of that time over here in Europe and more than five years here in Spain specifically. So, I've made a paella or two myself. So, let's get started. This rice dish is like a spaceship that will take you wherever you want with anything you want, whenever you want. Now I've been following Joshua Wiseman for a while now and he does a very good job not just with the cooking but also with the videography. He does very good. I mean just look at the b-roll. Sharp. Okay, so today we're making paella. Now, this is like a recipe that's a vegan. I'm going to pronounce this paella, right? Most people pronounce it as paella, want, not paella. The so the paella that Joshua is making today is a seafood paella. This is probably the most famous paella that everybody knows, at least outside of Spain. Wherever you go in Spain, well, if you walk along the promenade in Barcelona or wherever, you will see a seafood paella. Now, it's the most famous, but it's not the traditional. The traditional one is the paella valenciana, which originated in Valencia. But we also have arroti bogavante, arroti cangrejo, arroti montaña, arroti, arroti negro, which is a squid ink paella. So we have a lot of different rice dishes here than just the seafood paella. So if you are here and you want to try something else, I would recommend trying another paella dish, not just the seafood one. Plus, it's basically a one pot meal. Before we start, we need a shrimp mm. stock. Thankfully, and this paella, is a it is a one pot meal, but of shrimp that's been peeled and deveined. There are two pots that you need to clean. With the peels on so, so that you can peel them meal. yourself, and then reserve all of those shells. Place them in a medium-sized sauce. What Joshua is making is what we call here fumet. What he's doing, he's making a very basic, very easy fish stock. What well, how we normally make it? We don't make it like this. We get fish bones, so any like hake or anything cheap, hake, monkfish, any fish bones that are the cheapest fish bones that we can use because the fish bones are for stock, it adds flavor. Then we also add carrots, onions, and celery. So we have all the aromatics or the aromatic vegetables for the stock. This adds more flavor. You can add bay leaf, you can add parsley as well. Parsley is a very common herb here to add. And like he is doing, you can add shrimp shells. You can add lobster shells if you have any left over is all to make a very tasty and flavorful stock. And if you would like, you can even add, say, a little bit of paprika or pimienton, which we use a lot here. It just adds a little more color to the caldo, to the fumet, instead of just having a plain white stock. Uh, mm, he's using lobster, huh? This is going to be a good paella. This is going to be an expensive one. Okay, no, he's doing good. He's doing good. He's deveining it, cutting it. Then take your knife, slice straight down the middle, and press aggressively. Yes, good advice. To split the lobster cleanly in half. Now, tail. Now, in a separate pot, grease with spray oil and add half a pound or 227. All right, so Joshua is searing the chicken separately. This just adds color to it. Um, you can do it like this. This is more like in the French kitchen where you make everything separately and then we put it together instead of the Spanish kitchen. So this is fine, but he's making what looks like it's gonna be a paella mixta. Now, it does exist, paella mixtas, which they add like seafood and meat to it. It's not very common, but some people do make it. Saffron adds a lot of flavor to this. We use saffron in a lot of the uh, dishes here in Spain as well. You just need to add a pinch or two if you're making, say, a paella this big. You don't need to be adding that much. Now it is time. Paella has some rules, so listen carefully. One, you must use bamba or some other Spanish short grain rice, but I'm using bamba here. Two. So bamba rice is a very typical rice here in Spain. It's a rice that absorbs a lot of water. You can still overcook it, but it will absorb a lot of water. It's normally a three to one ratio. So one cup of rice for every three cups of water. And with no lid or washing and in an open pan. I know, I know, seems wrong. This is how it's done. Right, three, there's no lid. Um, yes, that's true. Yeah. All right, normally instead of olive oil, you can also add ajo perejil, which is a sauce is parsley, garlic, and olive oil that's blended into a little salsa that they add for everything. And we add this as well for the beginning of the paella instead of just oil. It adds a little extra flavor. To shimmer, add five ounces oh, or no. 140 grams of finely cubed <laughs> Spanish chorizo. That's oh, Spanish he's putting chorizo, chorizo in the paella. Spanish chorizo is not the same as so, Mexican chorizo. So outside no. of Spain, 
It's a very common thing that people think that chorizo goes in paella. It's kind of like pineapple on a pizza. Outside of Italy, it's normal. In Italy, you'll be hard pressed to find it. The same is true for like chorizo and paella. It's not a common thing. I'm sure that there is a house, somebody does do it, somebody adds it. But if you go to Valencia, if you go to Barcelona, if you go anywhere in Spain pretty much and you put chorizo in a paella or you ask them to put chorizo in the paella, they're going to tell you no. It's just so, now, not something that you do. But then again, minutes, you can do whatever you want. If you want to make it your own way, fat, that's fine. Then add your but don't expect this when you visit onion, very finely chopped, one red bell pepper, all We have different types of starters and this is not necessarily a sauce but it, it makes a base starter to any of these recipes so we have mirepoix in french cuisine where it's carrots onion and celery and here in spain they have what's called a sofrito now in the sofrito people call this in the normal kitchen in their houses right in the professional kitchen we call it marca and we make it before actually making the paella because if you make it like this this is the more of the home method of making it it will literally take an hour or more to make it because you want to cook the onions and the pimientos or the peppers so long that they actually break down and it becomes a sauce. About three minutes, then add one cup or 240 milliliters of dry white wine. Again, let that simmer down until the majority okay, of so, the Okay, so, all right, Joshua is adding white wine to the sofrito. Um, white wine, wine is not as common in Spanish cuisine. I don't add it to the sofrito, but it's not as common in Spanish cuisine as French cuisine. If this was French cuisine, white wine, yes, we add it all the time. To summarize, I'm making a seafood paella. You add the ajo perejil first to a hot pan. You add the calamari in, not the chorizo, the calamari. You add the sofrito if you made it separately, or you add the ingredients for the sofrito and you cook and reduce. Then we're going to add the rice. You cook that for about four or five minutes. You just want to heat the granules of rice up. Then you add the stock. Now the stock needs to be hot because if the stock's not hot, you're gonna drop the temperature of the rice. So instead of adding all the stock at once, because after you heat the stock up, it will evaporate a little bit. You may need more. Add a ladle at a time. Allow the rice to cook. It's going to look like a soup. Once the rice starts to absorb the stock, you add a little more stock, just a little bit, to make it a little liquidy. And then you're going to give it a couple hard shakes. This will make sure that the rice it lays flat. If the rice is not flat and it's bumpy, it's not going to cook evenly because the rice will be out of the stock and everything else. Once it's at this stage, the after the rice is minute, flat, you're going to lay some well, mejillones and <laughs> what are they, mussels the and clams. I'm rice, so thinking in Spanish. You're going to lay some mussels and clams then around the paella and decorate it how you want it. And then you're going to let that cook for 12, 15 minutes. Add in your seafood. First, this begins with your split lobster tail. Now, like I said, you want to cook the mussels and clams with the paella. If you're cooking shrimp or if you're going to add lobster to the paella, it's best to cook it separately. That way it's easier to manage by cooking everything like separately like because you can easily overcook and seafood and then you cook the rice separately and then at the end, after the rice is done and after the seafood is done, you can well, put the two together, decorate it and serve it. Alright, so he's covering it. You can cover the paella as well. This does help cook it a little bit if you're cooking the stove top. And then he's putting it in the oven. You can put it, like I said, you can cook it in the oven. But for the amount of time that he's cooking it, he's cooking it for more than 30 minutes. And bomba rice does not take 30 minutes to make. Then again, the paella, or this paella is a little too thick. So I would suggest, because it's about this thick, the paella is gonna take a lot longer than a paella that we normally make is this thick. It's about one inch, not two or three. So if you have a thick paella, it's gonna take a lot longer for the, especially if you're cooking on the stovetop, it's going to cook from the bottom up. No, the heat's coming from the bottom up. So it's going to take a lot longer than, say, cooking in the oven. And it's going to take a lot longer cooking a paella like this than one 
that's only in this stick. Oceanic world. Immediately hit that with we do add a little olive oil, oil on top. Ideally Spanish. If it looks a little dry Spanish. after you finish, just add a little just olive oil to it. And of course, of lemons, of lemons, lemons we add as well, and parsley on top as well. Finish that with some fresh what I would suggest parsley. though, is to add a little bit of aioli. People like aioli is personal preference if you like it or not. It goes well with it. The bottom of the paella is just as important. And he got the soca right. Yeah, he did. He got this. So what will happen is some people take this very seriously. Yes, this is one of the signatures of paella. You want the caramelization on the bottom. So what some people do here to test the paella to see how good it is is to actually take a paella after it's finished and to actually flip the paella completely. And if it sticks, it's considered good. If it doesn't, and it slides off and it lands on the floor, well, it's not. That's all I gotta say. So you can't say that this isn't paella. Good God. So first, it's almost like a sandwich. You have two layers, caramelized rice at the top, soft pillowy rice in the middle, and crisp rice. So overall, Joshua got more things right than most. It's not easy making a paella to begin with, and it's not easy making a good paella. So obviously, if you want to make your own paella at home, you can make a paella mixta, and if you want to put chorizo on it, you can. There's no law against it. But just keep in mind, whenever you visit these countries, it may not always be how you expect it. If you did like the video, guys, then be sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe. And if you would like to support us on Patreon, then I would be very grateful as well. If you would like a delicious Spanish recipe, then you should click on this video here and I'm sure you will enjoy it.